America's emergency alert systems are scary. I've not really seen too many emergency alert systems. So really excited to get into this video. Before we do, I appreciate if you guys can hit that subscribe button. And let's go straight into this and check this out. I want to tell you a true story from my youth. Okay, okay, so back in the day, I used to go to bed and I'd fall asleep with the TV on. I was afraid of I ghosts and stuff. It doesn't matter, all right? I was sleeping soundly, right. so cozy in my bed, when I was suddenly awoken by this. Oh, hell no. Nah. Yo, that would be my real reaction, bro. Oh, that's I had a tornado. freaking meltdown in my bed. I was so freaked <laughs> out. And on top of that, the sirens started going off. So you had like the sirens oh. sounding and this robotic voice saying all these weird things. And it was a terrifying experience. Everything oh, yeah. As a kid as well, bro. Like, yo, I'd be thinking, wait, wait, wait. Are we going to war? Like, what's happening, man? It was fine, though. We went down the basement, and the guy was like, ah, never mind. It was just a little rotation. It's fine. Go back to bed. <laughs> okay. But yeah. Emergency alerts, they're pretty intense. Right. These alerts are specifically designed to get your attention. And that's why the noise is so scary. It's supposed to be. If it was some happy little harp noise, no one... Do are these alerts, like, quite common, or are they rare? Like, do they ha happen quite often? I would pay attention to that. If I was just sleeping there and all of a sudden... Tornado emergency. <laughs> Please go to the basement. I wouldn't wake up. Are you joking me? For safety reasons, emergency alerts need to be terrifying. Yeah, of course. And today, we are actually going to do a deep dive into the history of emergency alerts. Oh, wow. We're going to look at the scariest alerts. We're going to look at other alerts from other countries. We're going to look at rare alerts. Okay. That's what we're talking about. Let's get into it. You know what? Like, the UK will have alert systems, obviously, but I've never, I, I've never seen one. I've seen, like, a COVID alert text on my phone before, but, like, it wasn't, like, a really, like, scary screaming alert. It's going to be interesting. It is now time for Soil Studios history lesson. Okay. Let me take you back to August 29th, 1949. Oh, wow. The Soviet Union had just tested their first atomic bomb, RDS-1. Between 1945 and 1949, the United States were the only country with atomic bomb capabilities. Right. During those four years, the US had more power than any country ever, because they could literally just destroy an entire city like that if they Mod. wanted to, all right? But that would change in 1949 when the Soviet Union was like, uh-uh, we also have atomic bombs. A new atomic power had entered the chat, thus beginning the Cold War. Yo, a very, very scary time and still is, bro. Like, it was definitely a scary time back then. But like, bro, with, with the nukes that everyone has, bro, yo, World War Three wouldn't even be a war, bro. Stockpiles rose along with tensions, and the U.S. knew they needed a way to notify every citizen in the event of an atomic attack. Smart. Enter the Civil Defense Administration in 1950. It was FCDA's job to protect every citizen in the event of World War III. Bro, and they did this by putting in a number of measures, including fallout shelters, civil defense sirens, my favorite being the Federal Signal Thunderbolt, as well as a broadcast system known as Conrad. Wait, 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 wait. I got a question for you guys in America. Do you guys have, like, shelters that you know of that you can go to in case of, like, an emergency war? Let's say, let, let's say, really hope this don't happen. Nukes are being launched. Bro, I would be dead. I have no I, I don't I don't know of one location where I could go underground in the UK, bro. I don't know one shelter. I actually don't. I actually don't. I wonder if like in America it's more common and like the locations are more, you know, you, you know where to go. Conrad is like the grandfather of the modern EAS. Right. So what even is it? Well, it's more of an emergency broadcast station and less of an emergency alert. Essentially, in the event of an atomic attack, all radio stations would interrupt normal programming and tell the listener to tune to the special Conrad stations okay. at 640 or 1240 AM. It was on these stations where the listener would then get vital information on the current situation. Right. The reason for there being two stations was actually because the listener would have to switch between the two every few minutes. This was meant to throw off any attacker from trying to crack into the system. Oh, I imagine really? back in the day, back in the 50s, kids, you know, they would learn 911. Like every kid knows 911. But it wouldn't right. surprise me if they were also taught 12:40 a.m., 6:40 a.m. In fact, Oh, wow, was you guys taught this? Like was this actually a thing? Cars back in the day actually had to have special Conrad markings on their radio dials for the stations of 6:40 and 12:40. Oh, wow. Let's go ahead and check out the Conrad station today. Let's see what's going on. Oh, 
I think we'll be all right. Yeah, I, that don't really sound like an emergency notification, mate. <laughs> Conrad, it wasn't perfect. There were many false alarms. Lightning was kind of a hazard and it would mess things up all the time. Right. And on top of that, Conrad was designed for enemy bombers, but bombers weren't really an issue anymore. The issue became ICBMs missiles traditional bombers couldn't blow up every city at the same time right so time wasn't a huge deal but with the introduction of icbms time was now of the essence you may only have 10 to 15 minutes before the bombs hit so the federal Mad. civil defense administration replaced conrad with the emergency broadcast system EBS. or ebs in 1963. yo listen bro if like something like that really did happen you have to think fast man Bro, it would be scary. Like, let's say your nuke was heading to the UK. I don't even, I don't even know what I'd do. I, I don't know. Bro, the only thing I could do is just look into the sky and just wait. Like, there'll be nothing. I, don't, I genuinely don't know what I would be able to do. EBS is actually very similar to the modern EAS. In an event where the emergency broadcast system was needed, the president himself would send an emergency action notification, or EAN, to all major TV and radio stations. Okay. They would then pause any broadcast and show the alert. Oh wow! The alert would start off with a creepy tone, known as the attention signal. To H-E-L-P. That's three seven. Yo, this would freak me out, man. These tones were engineered to be unnerving. They would achieve this by playing two tones: one at 853 hertz and one at 960 hertz. Oh! Put them together and you have the attention signal. <laughs> Following the alert signal, a real life person would then read off- Yeah, I ain't gonna lie. I don't think that would not alert anyone, bro. That would definitely alert anyone. Of a script written to them from the president. There were two different scripts depending on how severe the emergency was. The first one was the white card message, AKA EAN1. Okay. This was just a general emergency declaration. Nothing too specific, but stay alert. Kind of like a tornado watch, but right. with atomic bombs. And there actually exists some pre-recordings of white card messages. This particular example comes from WGN in 1985. Take a listen. We interrupt our program at the request of the White House. This is the emergency broadcast system. All normal broadcasting has been discontinued during the emergency. This station will continue to broadcast, furnishing news, official information, and instructions as soon as possible for the Northeast section of Illinois. The fact that oh, we wow. can listen to these is pretty wild. Like they didn't know that YouTube was going to be a thing. So right. the man who recorded this thought if anyone heard it, it would be a serious situation. It's a bit unnerving to listen to for that reason. The red card script or EAN2 meant that an attack was 100% happening. Unfortunately, there are no known TV pre-recorded script. Cut the transmission carrier for five second return carrier to the air for five seconds. What the? Oops. However, there are a few pre-recorded scripts for radio. This one comes from Philadelphia radio station WFIL in the early 1970s. Take a listen. The Office of Civil Defense has issued the following message. This is an attack warning. Repeat, this is an attack warning. Yo, bro, if like I ever heard that, oh my days. Like I'm getting chills listening to it now, bro. And I know it's just a YouTube video and it's not actually the real deal. You know what I mean? Attack warning means that an actual attack against this country has been detected and that protective action should be taken. This is an emergency action notification. Oh, wow. All broadcast stations shall broadcast emergency action notification message number two, red card. Essentially, yeah, we're under attack. I wonder if any of you guys would have any... You know how I said I'll have no plan whatsoever? Let me know in the comments if any of you guys would actually have a plan. And let me know if you guys have any, uh, have heard or seen any of these uh, warnings. You need to get the heck out. Sirens would go off. They'd be doing the attack <gasps> whale, which is when it goes up and down. Oh, no. Nah. Not a good situation. The emergency broadcast system was tested many times throughout the 1960s, 70s, and 80s. And a oh, lot really? of kids were totally freaked out by these tests. Like, some of them are genuinely scarred. And they can be creepy, especially if the test interrupts like a TV show meant for kids. Like if you're watching Sesame Street and all of a sudden this happens. Yeah, bro. 
Those blood red letters. Yeah, a lot of TV stuff. Bro, some kids might not even realize there's a test. I might be running around the house screaming. But the parents and the parents gonna panic like, yo, is this real? Stations had their own custom screens. And some of them were pretty chill, no big deal. But some of them were a bit sketch. In this first example, I don't know exactly what happened, but for some reason the attention signal is all messed up and distorted. And there's like this red screen. It's just weird, take a look. Okay. For the next 60 seconds, this station will conduct a test of the emergency broadcast system. This is only a test. This next one's kind of creepy because someone recorded it with like a camcorder and it just has like this kind of horror movie vibe to it. Uh oh. Oh. Freaky, also, man. I've heard from a lot of people that the logo itself, like the Civil Defense logo, the CD logo, they were actually afraid of the logo. They weren't afraid of anything else, but when that logo popped up, they were like, I feel like this <laughs> next example has a pretty creepy Civil Defense logo. Check it out. Oh, yeah, that's weird, that is. I mean, it is kind of creepy. I Bro, I ain't gonna lie. Bro, this is, a, I say, yo, correct me if I'm wrong, but in this looking like a bit of like the Illuminati kind of symbol. <laughs> yo. I don't know why, but it just looks kind of weird and ugh. So in the 60s, in the 70s, these kind of alerts were only meant for like World War III right. atomic warfare, like nuclear Armageddon. But people start thinking, what if we started using this for weather emergencies? Like what if we took okay. the sirens, the civil defense sirens, and use them as tornado sirens. What well, yeah, a lot of you guys have been telling me recently that like the tornado warnings was going off. It was like a tor I, I I don't know, I can't remember what area, but yeah, like, and then some of you guys told me that like, they would do tornado warning tests like every two weeks, but you would hear the alarm, yo. If we took EBS alerts and used them for weather, so in 1976, they started doing that. I think in large part, this was actually in response to the 1974 super outbreak wow. that took 310 lives. And a lot of TV stations had their own weather emergency slides. Like check out this tornado warning slide. Pretty cool, honestly. Speaking of tornado warnings. Yeah, tornado that's, like, that's looking like a bit of like an intro to a tornado movie. Season is quickly approaching. And to get myself into the mood. NordVPN. And in the pinned comment, be sure to check it out. Thank you so much to NordVPN for sponsoring the channel. So at the federal level, at the national level, there is EBS. But many different localities actually have their own warning alert systems. Okay. These are known as local access alerts or emergency override systems. Sometimes local authorities know way more about a situation than the national government. Right. And if they need to inform the public, a local access alert is the best way to do it. What's interesting about local access alerts is that they are different throughout the entire United States. Yo, I got a question then. What are they going to do nowadays? Are they sending more alerts common to your phones? Because not everybody's watching TV nowadays, you know what I mean? Like we're on YouTube, you might be on the TV, but for example, I'm a monitors, right? And like when I do use my TV, I use my it's connected to my Xbox and I use it for like YouTube and Netflix, right? So like they wouldn't be able to send me an emergency alert to my TV. Do you know what I mean? So how would that work? Would it just send it to your phones now? Some of them are very chill, you know, a simple tone, maybe a little Morse code, and some of them literally had alarms going off. I want to look at some of the creepier ones. Okay. Let's start off with this tornado watch in Sioux City. Good, great news. Yo, what? This is the South Sioux City Police. Definitely pretty strange that static screen and the weird UFO-y noises. Yeah, yeah, I ain't gonna lie. I swear to God I was being hypnotized there. I, I swear that I was being hypnotized, bro. <laughs> this tritone one from St. Joseph, Missouri is also a bit sketch. Take a listen. St. Joseph uh -huh. actually has a lot of weird ones. They had another one in 2003 that was just, I mean, l take a listen to this. It's. <laughs> no, I see what they're doing here. They're going with like video game themes, bro. That's what they're doing. 
That's what I, I, I feel like I plugged in my PS2. Perhaps the most startling is this local access alert from Yukon, Oklahoma in 1999. Take a listen. Uh, this is the Yukon Emergency Operations. We are so yes, very strange sounds indeed. But yeah, there's one weird. sound that I have yet to mention. And that is this one. Okay, yeah, bro, listen. Yo, yo, I ain't gonna lie, bro. I, well, to be fair, if I seen this, I'd be running around freaking. But this is for the weather. This is for to tornadoes, right? Yeah, I, I, I'd hit the mute and then I'm gonna run around and freak out. <laughs> this one, this one to me is actually the creepiest. This is the screeching sound that many are familiar with during a severe weather event. So what is this? This is yo. You guys gotta let me know which one of these have you heard. Like, I, I, and let me know like your response. Known as same or S A M E or specific area message encoding. Okay. These sounds are actually data bursts. So what the heck? is a data burst. Yeah, what's well, that? that noise is the sound of a sequence of numbers containing vital information about a specific alert. Huh? Huh? This is who is sending the message. This is what is happening. This is who is affected. So these are like different counties and stuff. And this is the source that's sending the alert. Yo, how are we meant to figure that out by the hearing that, bro? Like, you reckon someone sat in the living room going, oh, yeah, 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 so this is a... Da, 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 and then know all the information? The same sound was developed throughout the 80s and the 90s by the National Weather Service as a way to encode messages through tones. The creation of the same tone was a big deal, and at the same this time, EBS was having some major issues. Many stations had terrible procedures, and there were inexperienced operators. The Cold War had ended. It was time for a change. Right. And that change would come on January 1st, 1997 when the emergency broadcast system was replaced by the emergency alert system okay. or eas there was a lot of benefits to the eas compared to the ebs first of all you don't need someone reading off a script so due to the nature of the that same tone the screeching tone since that's a data stream computers can just take that data and then read it off right that's where you get that creepy robotic voice it kind of makes it a little scarier when you have a robot saying just random towns and stuff. Service in Indianapolis has issued a tornado warning for northeastern Davies County. But it's very... Yeah, I ain't gonna lie, that is creepy. ...useful because you don't need someone reading off a script every time there's a tornado or every time there's a severe thunderstorm watch or right. whatever. The National Weather Service could just be like, oh, it's not looking good over in Illinois. We better put in a severe thunderstorm watch send it and then the robot can read it out to everybody smart it's very convenient of course many people think about weather when they think of emergency alert systems they think of tornadoes floods severe weather it makes sense yeah this is why bro in the uk we aren't even seeing many alert systems because we don't have this crazy severe weather you know what i mean that's by far the most common alert that we get however on rare occasions we can get non-weather alerts Sometimes there's a shelter in place alert or a civil danger warning alert. This might mean? be because there's a shooter on the loose or someone has escaped from prison or oh, something. Really? These are pretty rare, obviously, but they are definitely terrifying. But there's Oh wow, have any of you ever seen any of them? For like a shooter alert or prison alert? From prison or something. Oh, wow. These are pretty rare, obviously, but they are definitely terrifying but there's a whole list of codes for different alerts and you can see them on wikipedia like look at this here's the code for nuclear meltdown we even have volcanoes technically eas is still meant for national emergencies right. just like ebs and conrad back in the day eas is meant for like world war three but it's never been used for that obviously and it's well, only been tested a handful of times we, we definitely hope not soon as well, bro. The first time they ever tested it was in November of 2011. Watching television or you're listening to the radio, uh, you are about to hear it. We're told it will last just 30 seconds. 1370. Oh. Oh, my. And it didn't go super well. If you listen to the test, there's a lot of reverb. There's a lot of echoes. In your area, 
Had this been an actual emergency, the attention signal you not quite how they planned it. Since yeah, I ain't gonna lie, I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to like hit that multiple times to understand, bro. Then they have improved the system a little bit, and there have been a few other tests. Other countries have their own emergency alert systems. Canada's is very similar to the U.S.'s, but the alarm sound is quite intense. Take a listen. New Amsterdam on global. Oh, what? Yeah, that's... Yo, that's more of like the sound like someone breaking into your house. Wild, but not quite as creepy as China's, which has both an alarm and a countdown. Check it out. Ah, me. Not what I would want to be hearing during the end days. Yo, what did cutting down to? What's the cut down for? People are really into emergency alert systems. Like you go on YouTube and there's all these like mock scenarios of, you know, different the sun went out. Like some of them are kind of creepy, some <laughs> of them are kind of funny. There was one that was an EAS, like don't turn off the lights. <laughs> just so creepy huh? actually no but that's weird honestly eas is already outdated i mean think about it who watches tv this who is what i'm saying listens to the radio hardly anybody right. that's why the emergency alert system is slowly being replaced by wireless emergency alerts or oh so the eas is going to be taken over by the wea right that makes more sense because that's what I was saying, bro. Like, I like I wouldn't ever get an alert system because I'm not watching TV, you know what I mean? So I'm going to have to get it pop up on my phone or something, bro. Or WEAs. That's that classic alarm that you get on your phone if something bad is going on. I've never had anything like this. These are used for three different... We did have a test in the UK once. It was a few years ago. I, I think it was during COVID. But I never got the sound. I just got a text message. So I, I went on my phone and I seen a text message and I was like, oh, okay. You know what I mean? So I did have that once. Different reasons. They use them for national emergencies. But they're also used for weather, just like EAS. Here's an example of a tornado warning. And I think they're best known for Amber Alerts. False alarms do happen with WEAs. Right. The classic example being the January 13th, 2018 ballistic missile false alarm in Hawaii. Oh, wow. Look at this. Could you imagine seeing a message like this on your phone? terrifying Man. this is not good people like freaked out the thing with the um the phone alerts i feel like it needs to flash your phone scary bro and make a scary sound because the amount of times i go on my phone and i see a notification and i just swipe up and totally miss it bro i do that all the time I, bro so many people just swipe up and just like won't even see that people on the roads hidden tunnels a bunch of people took shelter it was not good. In fact, Vern oh, wow. Miyagi of the Hawaiian Emergency Management Agency stepped down from his role, even though it wasn't even his fault. The whole Hawaiian oh, missile crisis thing is just, it's a weird thing because it's like the only example of what a true red card message would look like, I like how people would actually react to it. Let's just hope that that never happens. Let's hope we never get a true red card national emergency alert. Oh yeah, let's hope. Especially with like current times, bro. And now he up places to get in. Yeah, let, let's really hope, dude. And on that note, thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next one. Yo, it would be scary, bro. What is this? What... Is this his alert system? <laughs> that was a really good video. I enjoyed that one. Let me know what kind of alert system you guys have seen before. Great video. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed. If you did, make sure to leave a thumbs up, subscribe for more content. Live every single day on twitch.tv forward slash L3WG. If you guys want to check me out over there, I'll see you all in the next one. Peace.